Well, I'm out here at Jenkinsburg this afternoon trying to do a little rail fan. Hoping maybe a train will come by. Funny the things you think about when you're sitting out here waiting for a train. So I thought I'd tell you a little story. Over the years of my job as a railway carman, I often had to climb underneath rail cars and work on them. Various jobs we did, there was times when we would get hurt. Bumps and boo-boos and this and that. The thing about having an accident at the railroad, you got to report it. And they kind of got you between a rock and a hard place. If you don't report it, you can be fired for that. If you report it and they find out you broke some kind of safety rule, you could be disciplined for that. I was remembering one day I was working up under a real car down at Griffin. We used to have to get up underneath the real cars and replace parts when they were broke or defective. And that day was no exception. I had to climb underneath it, an old low side gone. Wasn't a whole lot of room underneath there, but it was parked in the dray track at Griffin, Georgia. We often kept an old piece of cardboard or something we could sit on up under the car to keep us out of the dirt and mud. We often referred to that as a dog bed, but it made it more comfortable to sit under there instead of sitting on the gravel and the rocks and mud or whatever foreign substances might be there, grease, dirt. When I slid up under that gun, I didn't have a piece of, I didn't have a dog bed with me that day. Scooched all up in the rocks, trying to replace a defective brake valve on the car. As soon as I slid up into a seating position underneath that car, in that gravel was a broke bottle. Pieces of glass was all up in there, and as I slid around, it stuck me in the rear. A sharp piece of glass just jabbed me right in the rear. I managed to extract a piece of glass, I don't know, a half inch, three quarters long out of the out of my rear end. I went ahead and finished the job I was doing. And I thought, well, maybe I better go get a tetanus shot. That means I'll have to report this. If you didn't report it and you got an infection or something, they would say you should have reported it. Well, it sounds like I got a train coming. I think he said 175. I thought I'd make a light of it and I wrote him a little poem. Sent it off to my boss in Columbus. And it went something like this. It happened a day while working on the dray. I sat on some glass and punctured my ass. If you don't believe this story is true, just take a look. It's all black and blue. And I faxed it off to them. Went along, they sent me back out. No, they called me. Is this some kind of joke? I said, no, it ain't no joke. I'm just making an accident report. Every time that boss would see me, he sat on no more glass, have you? I said, no, not lately, but I can't think of the times that we would bump our toes or bump our head or smash our fingers, little things like that. We often didn't report them if it was just something minor, but anything that might be questionable, you had to, you had to, you were forced to report it. I don't know, I just figured I'd share that with you. NS 175 South, diverging approach. Chickensburg, Mainline, Society, 175 South. Diversion approach? I mean, we got a northbound coming too if he's got to pull over here and wait.
his signal gave they gave him a diverging approach into the siding, so he's gonna sit here and wait for something to come northbound, I guess. I guess it would be possible somebody was gonna run around him southbound, but I doubt that's happening. <laughs> 